Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and for this video I'm going to go through all the Blu-rays and DVDs that I picked up in the month of January. So I'll get straight into it. The first one from Screen Factory is Alien Predators which is from the 80s. Uh, this was okay, it was fun. It's like these uh, three friends travelling through Spain and they have to deal with like this alien threat. The only thing with this was I was expecting kind of like more practical effects and like more practical gooey effects and things like that. And there's a little bit of that in this but I thought there could have been a lot more for this type of movie. So it was okay. It was alright for what it was. Next up from Severin we have the Astrologer. Uh, which I, I kind of like this. It gets quite a bit of hate for being like dull and a bit all over the place. But I, I did get some enjoyment out of this. I, I don't really know why. It is it is a bit of a mess of a film and it doesn't make a lot of sense at times. But I kind of just enjoyed the 70s of this one. And it's uh, it's from James Griffinhouse, who I, I do really like as a director. And you can kind of tell as well. It has that kind of gritty grimy feel that his movies tended to have so although it's kind of different from some of the other films i've seen him do it does still have like the tendencies of a, of a james click in house film and i enjoyed it for those qualities so yeah bit of a bit of a but one that's all over the place and, and not a great deal happens in it but i just enjoyed it as like a throwback grindhouse 70s film so yeah interesting movie uh, next up from Severin again is Ballad of in Blood. Ballad in Blood. Now this was all right. This is like these three friends that wake up from like this crazy night of partying, and there's a dead body in the apartment, and they're trying to find out kind of what happened. Uh, yeah, it was all right. The main guy in this, the black guy, he was really good. He like uh, he gave a really good performance, but everybody else in this was kind of like sort of half-baked stoner characters that just kind of mumbled their way through the film and they just kind of irritated me and most of the film is just kind of like these three characters shouting at each other it, it sort of takes a long time to get to what is effectively one sort of little reveal towards the end of the film so not one that i enjoyed a great deal um it's from ruggero diodato you wouldn't necessarily know uh so yeah probably not one that i'll watch again but a really nice release from uh, severin Nice to see a, a, a really sort of fancy release of a film that you don't really hear about. So, glad that I picked it up. So that's that one. Uh, next up we have the uh, Beach Girls and the Monster. This is one that Alan Scarsa sent me and I need to give Alan a big thank you. He sent me a few films this month. I'll try and thank you along the way, Alan. Uh, you've been really generous this month. Thank you so much. I've, I've enjoyed trading with you over the last uh, few few weeks. But yeah, Beach Girls and the Monster, very, very si silly 60s film with these rubber-suited monsters running around after people on the beach. It's not a good film at all, um, but I enjoyed it for the kind of just the weird, silly 60s uh, vibes in this one and uh, seeing the, the rubber suit monsters running around. They look, they look totally fake and it's got such a silly plot. You can't take any of it seriously, but I enjoyed it for what it was. It's it's my kind of film for some reason. <laughs> so that's uh, The Beach Girls and the Monster. Next up from Severin, we have Black Candles, uh, which is a pretty crazy one. This is from the early 80s, and it's uh, kind of like this uh, satanic cult. I think this man and wife, they go to stay with a relative or something in this big house, and there's all these connections to, to satanism and things like that but this one is uh it gets pretty crazy in places it's uh yeah a little bit um uh, a little bit weird some some kind of uh, x-rated weirdness going on and and, and some pretty kind of uh, just just weird and gruesome things uh, it wasn't too bad i've seen better um but it was it was all right and it was uh, like i said pr pretty eye-opening uh, at, at times uh, yeah some some crazy stuff in this one but uh yeah, not too bad. So that's Black Candles. Next up from Wild Eye is Black Cat. There's another one from uh, Alan Scouser. Thank you, Alan. So this is an anthology, uh, three stories, I think, based on uh, 
uh, Edgar Allan Poe tales. It's not bad. It's, yeah, it's all right. Not too bad for Wild Eye. It's quite a bit of uh, eye violence in this one, which uh, somewhat reminded me of Lucio, Lucio Fulci. So uh, I got a bit of entertainment from that. But yeah, not a bad one. Okay, next up from Severin, we have Bloody Pit of Horror, uh, which is a pretty enjoyable Jello film from uh, the 60s, 1965, I think, of these, uh, I think it's like a film crew or something, and they're in this, like, really old gothic castle, and uh, they start to get, like, um, well, it's kind of, there's these weird people that live there that aren't all that welcoming, and then there's, like, this crazy guy, this executioner or something that's going around killing them off. It's very cheesy. Um, I don't think this would have been all that cool, even in 60s Italy. Um, it's, uh, it's some laughable stuff in this one. But I did really enjoy it. It, it was in colour, which I wasn't expecting. I thought it would be in black and white. So it was in colour, so we got some nice kind of vibrant 60s giallo uh, colours in this one. And I really like the ambience and the atmosphere of the dark castle and, and things like that. And I really, really love this... Uh, this slipcase from uh, Severin. It might be my uh, my favourite slipcase from them. Uh, it's a, a really nice release of the of this movie. Nice to see it get such a uh, a, a well done release. So yeah, Bloody Pit of Horror. I did enjoy that one. Right next up from uh, Scream Factory, we have Come True. I've not watched this one yet. I happened to see a trailer for it and thought it looked really interesting. So after seeing that, I, I picked it up. I'm going to give it a watch soon. It looks like a bit of like a, a neon-lit sci-fi horror film. So, yeah, we'll see what that's like. But I'm certainly intrigued by that one. Next up from uh, is from uh, Alan Scarsa, another one from him. This is uh, Dark Stories to Survive the Night. I think this might be an anthology, um, but I'm not too sure. I've not had a chance to check this one out yet, but it uh, looks pretty interesting. I look forward to giving this one a watch soon. Uh, next up again, again from Alan. Um, this is Death House, which is one that I've been uh, really interested to see for quite a while. Uh, it was uh, described as the, uh, the Expendables of Horror, so it's got all kind of like the the old sort of uh, horror superstars in this one. Uh, like Kane Hodder, Michael Berryman, D. Wallace, uh, loads, loads of people. They're all on the front there. Uh, I've not heard that it's all that great, uh, but I'm certainly going to check it out and see what it's like. I, I can't resist uh, a cast uh, with all these people in it. So hopefully I'll get some enjoyment out of it from, from all the stars that are in this one. So that's that one. Next up, we have Death Kappa, which is kind of like a kaiju spoof movie. Uh, I watched this one right at the beginning of the month, but I, from what I remember, I didn't really like it all that much. Uh, it was very, very silly. A bit too silly for my liking. It did have some kind of cool rubber-suited monsters in it, but they acted really kind of silly and juvenile, which I didn't really do it to me. So I didn't care about this one all that much. But cool to see some uh, rubber, rubber monsters anyway. Right, next up uh, we have The Gin. Not had a chance to watch this one yet, but again, this one looks pretty intriguing. Looks like pretty creepy stuff, so hopefully I'll get some enjoyment out of this one when I get round to it. Right, next one. This is a German release, um, a really nice release. Uh, I think this title is Dracula vs. Frankenstein. I know this as um, Assignment Terror. Um, never had a chance to pick Assignment Terror up, but I've got this one. This is from Alan. Thank you, Alan. Uh, so I've got it under this title with, with this release. Um, and this was really cool. I really enjoyed this one. This is from about 1970. It's like a Euro horror film with Paul Nashi. And I think they're like they're the aliens or something in this. And they come to Earth and they want to try and harvest these monsters and these creatures to take over... The human race or something like that it's not as fanciful as it sounds it's quite sort of gothic and hammer horror-esque but this features an array of monsters you've got uh, the dracula in it a mummy frankenstein and then most notable you've got the werewolf played by paul nashi who's most iconic playing his werewolf 
and they're all in this movie and they get quite a bit of screen time and things like that so I really liked it it was a good mix of like hammer horror cheesy euro horror cinema and I, I enjoyed the inclusion of all these different monsters and, and seeing Paul Nashy and things like that so great to finally great to finally check this one out so yeah really happy with that one Okay, next up from uh, this is Chakarama, we have uh, Drainiac. <laughs> so this is a real low budget B movie thing. These teenagers they do up this dilapidated house, and there's like an evil, slimy presence within the drains and things like that, and it sort of manifests itself later on as like evil spirits and and things like that. Uh, it's not bad. It's like very sort of B movie ish. Um, nothing like. This cover happens in the film, unfortunately. The cover's probably the best thing about this one. Um, I had a bit of fun with it, but it's 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 nothing to go crazy about. So that's Drainiac. Next up from uh, Eureka, we have Encounters of the Spooky Kind, uh, which I didn't I didn't care for this one. I couldn't get into it. So this is an Asian film with uh, Sam Oh Hung, and he he's. Uh, Spends the night in like a haunted house, but it's kind of a it's like a mix of martial arts. Got some really good choreo choreography in it, some great fighting and jumping around and things like that. The horror aspects aren't too bad, uh, but this is another one that's just very very silly and very slapstick, and it just I didn't like it. It, it took me out of the film. It was a, a bit too silly and cartoonish, so I just couldn't get get on with this one uh, all that much. It just wasn't really for me. But nice release from uh, Eureka. You get a nice slipcase and a booklet and a poster and things like that. Okay, next up is uh, Evolution, uh, which I've, I've never seen this. I remember it coming out uh, in the early like, 2000s, something like that. I uh, never got around to seeing it, so I thought I'd pick this one up since it's come out on Blu-ray. And I had a lot of fun with this one. This was a uh, pretty, um, pretty just undemanding kind of early 2000s comedy thing about this uh, meteorite that lands and it sort of spawns these giant bugs and giant creatures and uh, David Duchovny has to deal with it. Sean William Scott's in it. I always enjoy seeing him uh, in movies. So, yeah, I had, I had good fun watching Evolution. Good, good to finally check that one out. Next up from Severin, we have The Forbidden Door. Not had a chance to check this one out yet. Not too sure what to expect. It sounds pretty crazy, but I uh, have to give this one a watch to see see what it's like. I've heard a couple of good things about it, but we'll have to see. Okay, next up from Wild Eye, we have Forest of the Vampire. Not had a chance to watch this yet. Uh, Wild Eye are a very mixed bag for me. Sometimes I enjoy them. Sometimes I don't, but vampires in the forest sound pretty cool, so hopefully this one will be enjoyable in some way. Okay, next up, oh, this is a wonderful pickup. So next up, let's see if it stands up on here. Okay, yeah, so here we have uh, Ghost Stories for Christmas. Uh, so even though it's January, it, it doesn't matter. These, these aren't Christmas ghost stories. These were just... Uh, old-fashioned ghost stories that were shown on British television on Christmas Eve in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and these are absolutely wonderful uh, episodes. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying going through these. Uh, they're very, very British, <laughs> and, I, and I love that about them. They're starkly British. It's very much kind of like, um, I'd say, old chap, something very peculiar happened in the library today. <laughs> that kind of thing uh, but they're absolutely wonderful uh, they are uh, they're creepy they're classy they're, they have a great atmosphere to them they, they are they, all of them so far have been excellent and I'm really enjoying working my way through this series so if you like kind of gloomy old-fashioned British ghost stories I don't think you can get a better pick up than this uh, this is an absolutely fantastic set so yeah, really, really loving going going through these. Yeah, and really nice set. Uh, sort of thick, thick set there. So that is uh, Ghost Stories for Christmas. Really, really wonderful pick up that one. Next up from Severin is The Halfway House. This is a pretty fun one. This is this, uh, it's a halfway house run by this weird nun. And they take in 
sort of tear away teenage girls, but they happen to have this uh, big Cthulhu monster in the basement, and every now and again, they feed one of these girls to the monster. So there's a, it's quite a cool, big, like, practical effect monster. It's got these giant teeth, and they feed the girls to it. Pretty good stuff, um, kind of silly, but I enjoyed it. It was entertaining for what it was, pretty undemanding stuff. So yeah, that one was cool. Okay, next up we have Halloween Kills. So I did a review, in the, review of this on my channel if you want a more comprehensive uh, account of what I thought about this one. Bit of a mixed bag for me. Some things about it I really liked, other things I didn't like. Uh, so yeah. Okay, next up from Wild Eye we have Hell's Kitty which was a pretty fun anthology. It's a bit all over the place. It's a very, very crazy movie. Uh, in, sorry, it's not an anthology, actually. It plays out as a straight film. But as I was watching it, I was kind of thinking, this feels more like an anthology. And it was, uh, I think it was, it was Matt from You and Your Horror Movies actually informed me this originally was like an, an anthology type thing. And then they put it all together to make one movie, which is why it feels a little bit scattered. Uh, but this is kind of like just this guy with this crazy possessed cat who attacks people that just seemingly randomly turn up to his flat. Uh, a different array of characters turn up and there's some quite famous faces in this one as well. And some really good homages to horror movies as well. So yeah, this was a, a bit of a weird indie movie, but I did, I did enjoy it. It wasn't too bad for Wild Eye. Okay, next up is a movie that I'm sure everybody... Uh, knows about this. I think most people will have seen this film, but I've never never actually seen it uh, From Disney We have Hocus Pocus So yeah, never I didn't think I've ever watched this never sort of saw it as a kid or anything like that Gotta be honest. I'm not it doesn't appeal to me all that much, but I know this is a popular film I always see people talking about it like at Halloween and things like that So I just thought I'd pick it up uh, just so I can say I I've, I've watched it and you know, add it to the collection so hopefully I'll get a bit of fun from that one I know it's a pretty popular movie okay next up from um, Criterion I picked up House a Japanese movie not had a chance to watch this one yet I've heard it's absolutely crazy like almost indescribably crazy so I'm really not sure what to expect from this one other than quite a lot of weirdness so, yeah, I'll give this one a watch soon and, and see what it's like. It's uh, yeah, always a nice release from Criterion, so nice to get, get that one for the collection. Next up from Severin, I got House on the Edge of the Park. This is a really nice release from them. I have seen this uh, years ago. It's like a pretty, uh, pretty strong home invasion movie. Um, David Hess and uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici play these two psychopaths that break into this house party and kind of torture and murder the guests. Uh, but uh, I, I remember this one, it was pretty unpleasant, but I do remember thinking it was a really good film and it had some rather good kind of social and cultural sort of references and, uh, and, and undertones and, and things like that. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out again because it's been many years since... Uh, since I've seen this, and as I mentioned in my Severin video uh, a week or so ago, it does come with the original artwork because this is actually one of my favourite examples of, of horror movie artwork. I've always loved that picture on the cover, so glad that it comes with that. Next up from uh, Warner Brothers, I picked up Malignant. Which, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought this was excellent. Seems to get a lot of hate. I don't understand why. I thought this was really good. Uh, it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. I was kind of expecting a, like a dark, slow burn, supernatural film. But this actually gets um, really violent and quite gory. Uh, and yeah, just just didn't go in the direction that I thought it would. Uh, but really enjoyed it. It looks, it's it's really well filmed. The cinematography in this, I thought, was absolutely wonderful. It looks great. Uh, I didn't mind the effects. I didn't mind the CGI. I, I love the story, but I won't go into that because it kind of develops as the film goes along. 
the ending was okay, but I, I think there'd be more repercussions for the character <laughs> than what there was. But on the whole, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Malignant. Glad to glad to uh, pick that up, and yeah, I I really liked it. Thought that was a great film. Next up from uh, Intervision, we have The Mask Mutilator, uh, which I, I really enjoyed this one as well. This is a very, very fun sort of amateurish B-movie about these uh, kind of tier 18s uh, in like another halfway house thing. And it's kind of like run by a wrestler and they, they start getting killed off. Uh, so you don't know who's doing it, but they start getting killed off. Uh, it may or may not be this wrestler character, but it's kind of like just a slasher film with ties to wrestling, which is great. You know, I, I'm a big wrestling fan and I love horror movies. And and Britt Bronsky was in this as well. Um, he was really cool. I've not seen him since the Class of Newcomb High sequels, but he should have done more movies because uh, he's a really cool guy and he was awesome in this. So, yeah, great to see uh, Britt Bronsky in, in another movie. So, yeah, this is... There's not much to it, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it for what it was. Right, next up, this was another one from uh, Alan. Thank you, Alan, again for this. This is The Mimic. Not had a chance to watch this one yet. Looks like a spooky, kind of creepy kid ghost story type thing. Uh, I think it's foreign. It might be an Asian one or something like that. But this certainly looks interesting. So, yeah, looking forward to checking out The Mimic at some point. Okay, next up, I got Monsterland. Uh, again, not had a chance to check this one out yet, but it looks pretty cool. I think it's a anthology, and it's all kind of like based around monsters or something like that, which was right up my street. So I've heard mixed things about it, but I'm I'm hoping if it's monsters and creature features and an anthology, I'll I'll get some enjoyment out of this one. That's that one. Next up is The Mutation, which was, uh, okay, pretty decent creature feature. Uh, this scientist working on this lab rat, but it mutates and becomes giant and escapes from the lab and goes around killing people. Pretty standard stuff, but I did think the lab rat was kind of cool. It's uh, On the whole, it's kind of like a, a man in a rubber suit, which was awesome. A uh, bit of bad CGI at the end, but uh, yeah, like I say, standard stuff, but I appreciated it for the practical effects and the creature in it and the gore and things like that. So yeah, not too bad. Next up is a film that I watched many, many years ago, and it was one of the most bizarre movies I've ever seen. And I've never seen it since, and I thought I'd give it another chance. Uh, so from Criterion... This is Naked Lunch. And I just remember this being like, it was almost like I was hallucinating. This movie was so weird. I couldn't follow anything about it. I had no idea what the story was. Uh, it's based on a novel, which I think is even weirder. So goodness knows what the novel was like to read. Uh, but yeah, this one was so weird. All I remember from this was thinking the, uh, the giant bugs and the creatures in this were pretty cool. But other than that, it was just one of the weirdest uh, films I've ever seen so it's been a while so I thought I'd pick it up and see if I enjoy it anymore now that it's been a while so that's Naked Lunch okay <laughs> next up we have The Navy versus The Night Monsters a pretty fun 60s monster movie uh, of, of the Navy fighting these sort of giant plant monsters it's one of those films where you kind of you're supposed to be scared of the monsters, but they move at a glacial pace, and then can't really do anything when they catch you anyway. So uh, yeah, pretty silly stuff. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's um, it's one of it's 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 total fodder for like mystery science theater. It would have worked really well on one of those kind of episodes. Uh, it's that kind of movie, but I had fun with that one. It was all right. Next up, uh, I'll put this one this way because it's got the title on. Picked up Night of the Demon, uh, the Bigfoot movie from the 80s. Uh, I've just reviewed this in the previous video, so if you want to see a full review, check that one out. But this was uh, great to finally revisit this one. I've not seen it since I was a kid. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot more this time around than, than when I was a kid. 
and um, this is a really nice addition from Severin as well. It looks great, the picture quality is fantastic, and there's some great special features on this, which I've yet to check out, but a few makings of, and there's something about video nasties as well, which I certainly want to see what that's about. So yeah, really nice addition of Knight of the Demon, and great to finally pick that one up. Okay, next up is Ogre, which is just kind of like a little sci-fi channel type movie. These people stumble across this town, which is sort of like still living in ye olde times, and they have this ogre which keeps attacking them, and they have to like sacrifice someone to keep the ogre away, but these teens stumbling upon the place kind of complicates that, and um, yeah, it, they, they end up having to try and sort of fight back against the, the ogre. It's pretty good for what it is. I, I, I rather enjoyed it. It's got some terrible CGI on the ogre. But to be fair, I wasn't expecting all that much. And like I said, I did like it for what it was. Pretty entertaining stuff. So yeah, not too bad. Next up, I picked up the Oracle. Which uh, doesn't get all that good reviews. But I actually really like this one. I thought this was a really good film. Uh, this woman, she messes around with like an Ouija board and it invokes these evil spirits. And, and then one of the spirits that comes to her through the board is the spirit of this murdered guy. And he's trying to sort of use her um, as like a conduit to communicate to other people how who killed him and things like that. And the people that killed him... Uh, kind of get onto a trail and try to kill her as well. So there's this spooky Ouija board stuff in this and then these killers trying to get to this woman. I really liked it. I thought this was a great movie. Um, pretty sort of just cheesy kind of uh, uh, B-movie 80s. But uh, yeah, I really liked it. I, 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 I wouldn't have been as harsh on this as what some of the reviews that I've read were. So, yeah, certainly one that, that I enjoyed anyway. So, good to finally check out the Oracle. I did like that one. Next up, another one from uh, Alan Scouser. Thank you so much for this, Alan. This was Pinocchio's Revenge, and I really like this one. This surprised me a little bit. I wasn't expecting too much from it. I thought this might be like a bit of an inferior kind of child's play sort of uh, rip-off, but this kind of did its own thing. Had a really good story. Uh, this Pinocchio doll was pretty cool and pretty creepy. I liked it when he started walking around and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I had a really good time with Pinocchio's Revenge. And it's got a really cool kind of 90s vibe to it as well. So, if you like child play or if you like killer doll movies, definitely check out Pinocchio's Revenge. It's a, a really entertaining one. Next up, I got The Pyramid. Don't know much about this one, not watched it yet, but it uh, looks kind of like an Egyptian-based kind of mummy, uh, some mummy type thing. So, yeah, it looks pretty fun. Hopefully it'll be all right when I get around to that one. Next up, I got Red Snow, uh, which is another one that I enjoyed. This was pretty good. So it's this woman who writes kind of soppy vampire novels. And she's out the way in this cabin uh, in, in winter, in the snow, and she's just writing away. And she takes in this guy who happens to be a vampire. And she kind of nurtures him back to health, and they develop a bit of a bond. And he, in turn, starts to help her write her vampire novels. Because she's a bit of a, a failed writer at the time, but he helps kind of um, beef her books up and gives her a bit of vampire insight. Uh, but his vampire associates that, that, that aren't as uh, amicable as what he is uh, they turn up and it gets a bit kind of uh, bloody and and scary and that kind of thing uh, so I, I did I really like this one it's uh, it's a little bit different and, 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 I, and I enjoyed that I like the characters and I like sort of what happens I just didn't care for the ending after getting to know the characters over the course of the film I didn't like how it ended I didn't think that was uh, congruent to kind of the character development that we'd seen over the course of the film and the yeah the the ending of this kind of let it down but other than that I, I really enjoyed Red Snow I thought it was a good one and it was a little bit different okay next up I picked up 
Robot Monster. Now, I only got this one because I saw Rob from the Wacky World Lounge. He got a Robot Monster figure, which looked absolutely awesome. So I thought, I'm going to check out the film. Um, turns out the film is one of the silliest 50s sci-fi films I've ever seen. It's <laughs> centred around this contraption that blows out soap bubbles. And the, the robot monsters in question are like these giant overweight monkey suit things um, <laughs> with with diving helmets on. Uh, they look pretty terrible. And, and they're very incompetent as well. There's like a handful of human survivors on Earth. And they're trying to wipe out everyone. But they keep miscalculating everything. And they keep coming on and saying like, oh, Earthlings, we've miscalculated your numbers. So we're, now we need to do this. And... Oh, we've, we've miscalculated your power, so now we need to do this. And I'm like, you're supposed to be scared of these creatures, but they just keep miscalculating everything. They're just so incompetent and stupid. Uh, so, <laughs> so, a really bad movie, but i got to say I loved every minute for its uh, unintentional comedic value. So, uh, Rob from the Wacky World Lounge, um, this was a pretty terrible movie. I, I think you got the better end of the deal. You got the the action figure which is really cool i got the actual movie <laughs> which is not so cool but uh never mind it's good to finally check that one out uh okay next up i picked up saint maud uh gotta say i hated this uh absolutely hated this movie uh this was very very dull very boring felt like it was kind of wanting to be arty but not in a way that I liked very dreary didn't quite know what it was getting at or anything like that the characters were terrible I uh, didn't didn't care for the Saint Maud character or anything uh, no I did not like this film at all uh, it may be one that improves on repeated viewing because it's quite I don't know quite slow burn and maybe subliminal in places but I, I, I never want to watch this one again and not in like a, a horror way, not in like a sailor way, just because it was so boring and uh, just annoyingly dull. So yeah, St. Maud was not for me, unfortunately. Next up from Severin is Santa's, uh, Santa Sangra. Yeah, Santa Sangra. And uh, this one as well, I did not like this at all. Did not care for this movie one bit. I've heard some people, they really like this movie. They think it's like a masterpiece, um, full of visual flair and imagery and iconography and that kind of thing. But I did not like this one bit. Uh, from the moment it started, I just didn't like it. It's like one big, weird, confusing carnival uh, experience. And I'm not big on the carnival setting anyway. Uh, so no, I didn't like this. i got to confess, I didn't even finish this one which I hate doing, but I just did not like this at all. Good to finally see it, because I've heard about this movie for a long time, but oof, not for me. Okay, next up from Wild Eye is Soft Matter. So, Soft Matter. This one was okay. Yeah, so this one, they're like in, it's a bit of an indie film. They're in like this really kind of dingy, decrepit laboratory. And they're experimenting on these creatures, like kind of sea-based creatures or something like that. These sort of slimy kind of things. Uh, I can't remember why they're doing it. I think it's for like immortality or something. And it just gets a bit weird, a bit techno. Uh, and just very, very random. It was okay. I would have liked more of the... Uh, I'd have liked more of the slimy sea creatures. I'd like to have seen more of them. And at times it got a bit too weird. It was like... I don't know if they're trying to be funny or what, but it was just, yeah, it got a bit too weird and irreverent at times. But it, it was okay. Some pretty cool kind of creature moments in it sometimes. Okay, next up, I picked up Tamara. Uh, this was pretty cool. Um, it's kind of like Carrie uh, with like an occult twist. So this girl, she's like a bullied high school girl. And these high schoolers, they, uh, yeah, they're like picking on her and this incident happens and she she takes a fall and she dies, it kills her. Uh, but she turns up to school the next day and she's kind of no longer the timid, geeky girl that she was. She's like this kind of um, more attractive, sassy kind of woman. 
and she comes after the, the, the douchey high schoolers that picked on her and caused her death. Uh, I, I did like this one. It was a pretty kind of hip, enjoyable, cool movie from the early 2000s. So, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty good one. And next up from Warner Brothers, I picked up uh, Trog, the uh, kind of Bigfoot Yeti movie from the late 60s. Um, most famous now, I think, for being Joan Crawford's last film. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Don't really know much about this one or, or, or what it's like. Hopefully it's a, it's okay if it was her last film. I'm sure it'd be a bit cheesy, but looking forward to checking this one out. I do love my Bigfoot movies, so hopefully I'll get some enjoyment out of this one. <laughs> and then, uh, last one for this month um, is Werewolves Within, um, which, funny story, I got a box of Blu-rays delivered to my mum and dad's house. And as I was opening them, my dad says, um, you know, just just tell me you haven't ordered Werewolves Within. It's terrible. And I was like, actually, I have. It's in this box. And i uh, got to say, my dad was right. This is absolutely awful. I was so disappointed uh, with this one. It is a film that tries to be funny and thinks it's funny, but is not funny at all. Uh, really irritating characters, terrible dialogue. Very, very annoying delivery of the dialogue as well. Everyone kind of talks really fast and talks over each other. And I think it's supposed to be cute and quirky and funny. And it's just really, really irritating. And uh, yeah, it's like a who done it. Somebody in the town is a werewolf. Um, but I just found the whole thing so annoying. I just didn't care. I didn't like this one at all. It was a massive disappointment. So that's uh, everything that I got this month, guys. Thank you so much for watching this long video. As always, let me know what you think of these movies. Is there any that you like, any that you don't like? Let me know. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.